All right, fall is completely coming to a close here and we have snow up on the mountain. I've been snowshoeing around there with the family. It's been unreal and I'm really getting pumped to get on the snowboard. So what I'm gonna do in this video is I'm just gonna take you through the process of setting up my snowboard the way I do it and give you some tips and tricks along the way. But uh, yeah, let's get right into it. You. So I try and adjust my board. Yeah! <laughs> Woohoo! Alright, so the board I have here is actually one that you probably haven't seen very much in my videos, um, but I have had it for a number of years. Um, the reason you don't see it in these videos very much is because it's a regular width um, Arbor full camber Brian Aguchi Pro Model board. And it's an amazing board. I love it and I've absolutely been a really big fan of it on like harder snow where my toes and heels don't dig into the snow very much because it's a little harder. Um, so I can get away with riding a board that is not a mid-wide board like my Arbor Coda rocker is. Um, but out here in the West where it's uh, quite often very soft snow, uh, what I find is that with my 10, 10 and a half boot size, um, there's too much overhang of the toe and heels on this board. So I was constantly just, I could feel it slowing me down every time I wanted to turn pretty hard or something like that. So I actually never rode these, this board very often. I was thinking of selling it this year, but what changed my mind is that I actually updated my snowboard boots this year, which I am pumped for. And the reason for that is kind of twofold. My other boots are 10 years old, <laughs> um, which is ridiculous, but I ski and snowboard, so they don't get that much use. So they were doing okay. But at the end of last year at Sunshine, I was riding with a buddy and I found this like little typical morning, hard, um, shadowy area that had a little steep up and it actually kind of st almost stopped me in my tracks, but I recovered and just felt a big tweak in my left ankle, which just meant I rolled it a little bit in the boot, um, which I'm not a fan of and I'm too old for those types of injuries. So I went to a much, much stiffer boot. <laughs> and the added benefit of going to a new stiffer boot is that the technology is clearly gonna be a lot better. And the length of the sole is about an inch shorter, even though it's the same size 10 boot, 28.5 Mondo. And yeah, super pumped for that. So what that means is that when I'm riding this board, I have half an inch less on both sides that are gonna be overhanging. So I'm really, really pumped for that. It means I can ride this board a lot more. So I'm gonna set this one up, first of all, this year. Anyways, <laughs> that's a lot to talk about. Uh, let's get into the gear that I have here. So this is how I keep my snowboard stuff over the summer. I just take everything off. I wipe it clean with, uh, with a cloth and I make sure everything's dried out completely before I'm putting it away anywhere. And cleaning up all the edges, adding some wax to the base sometimes, let everything air out on the inside so there's no moisture kind of getting in anywhere, especially where the metal stuff is. So in the base plate you have the screws or I guess bolts that go into the board inserts here. And those typically get rusted very, very easily. You're probably super aware of that. These are a few years old and there's rust on them already from the last season. Uh, what I'm gonna do this year, which I haven't done before, but I think is a no brainer, um, is actually add some bike grease. So this is what I use on my mountain bike and road bikes, any of the bolts on there, aside from I think the, yeah, just the brake, uh, disc brake rotors. I don't use this on there. <laughs> but uh, pretty much every other bolt or through axle gets that because it's metal on metal contact. You don't want moisture getting in there and you want it to be smooth in and out when you need to adjust things, which I don't see why it wouldn't work here, right? Metal on metal. So I'm gonna be using a little bit of that. That's my little secret sauce this year. Uh, yeah, so then the other thing I got here is just that Phillips head screwdriver. And the Phillips head screwdriver is nice and fat at the end. Basically what you wanna make sure is that it's the right size for the insert on your bolt. Uh, you don't wanna be stripping these out, um, especially if they're tight in there after the summer of being on your board or something like that. You just wanna make sure no matter what bolt you're ever using, you wanna use the right tool to fit in there properly. And for me, it's the uh, Phillips head screwdriver I kicked across the floor. So, 
Uh, bindings they got on here are the, uh, I think they're a medium Arbor Hemlock bindings. Uh, they've been good. They've been showing somewhere on some of the bigger straps there. But that's kind of it. The only other thing I have is a tape measure to make sure the width of my snowboard bindings and position is correct from tip to tail. And yeah, then I'm throwing my bindings and everything on the board. All right, let's get started here. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to grease those bolts. All right, a little tip here. If you do find that you're really keen on trying to get this little bit of surface rust off, what you can do is you can put this stuff, put these just into a container with Coca-Cola Classic and it will take that rust right off in a number of hours or if you leave it overnight, it'll take that rust right off. Um, I can't promise it won't take the paint off too. I've only used it with chains. <laughs> But uh, that's pretty incredible that that stuff we put in our bodies will disintegrate the rust on these things. Just a little tip. I don't want to risk taking the paint off though. <laughs> All right, so you want to set the board up kind of how you stand, just so that it's a little more intuitive when you're putting on the bindings. And for me, this is how I stand. So I... So first thing I'm gonna do, is I'm just gonna put it in a spot I think is correct. Get this big binding out of the way. Take out my tape measure. So when I measure this, what I wanna do is I wanna make sure I'm going from the same point on one binding to the same point on another binding in the center, right? If you do heel to heel with the duck feet, it's gonna be a lot smaller. So for me in consistency, doesn't matter what angle it's at, I put it like that, like that. So you can see here, I'm at about 55, and I wanna be at about 62. So I'm gonna move. Yeah, that's the center, just 62 now, which is, the stance I like. And then now I'm curious, center to the back is about 42. Center to the front is about 43, which is what I want. I want a tiny bit more nose and a little bit less tail. That gives me a nice stance. 12 degrees on the back, out, and 18 degrees, so one tick past the 15, 18 degrees out the other way. So now all I'm gonna do is just rest all of them in here with the grease on them. So when you're putting these in, what you wanna make sure is you're not ever using a drill it's tempting to throw on a drill, even if you have the uh, torque set real low. Just use a screwdriver, it's not that big a deal. So when I'm starting them off, I'm using such a little amount of force, they should go in really easy. We're going to starfish pattern, so starting here, we go to this one. And the trick, instead of always just turning in, is I back it off until you can feel it kind of catch. And then it's forward, just loose. So here, here, and then back it off until it, see so here that click? That means it's kind of lined up pretty good. And then I tighten it in, it's just loose right now. While it's nice and tidy like this, I like to check all the bolts and screws on the outside. Some you'll need the Phillips head or whatever tool you need. Um, some are just gonna be kind of finger tight. These bindings, the one thing I don't like about them is these finger ones come loose all the time, especially on the toe pieces, especially on the back foot toe piece because it's coming off and on so much that anytime this thing twists when it's not in the ratchet, 
it seems to undo itself a little bit. So that's annoying. I always have to keep an eye on that. But now's a good time to get on top of all that. So we're not making it super tight. We're just making sure there's no play in these bolts. Okay, those all look good. Ratchets feel good. This one's starting to get a little bit of wear just because it's the back one. Um, something I could do if I really wanted to is I could swap these because this one gets so much more use. I can swap with this one and then that ratchet will prolong the length of these or life of these bindings or you can buy another one of these. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna undo everything. Bring up the high back, undo everything. Bring up the high back. And especially because I got these new boots, I want to make sure they fit into the bindings properly. So start with the back foot. So I get it tucked into the heel there. And what I'm looking for is that this buckle comes around and tightens nicely and centered. These bindings basically have a center guide here that I like to use. It's also got some wear here, but I can tell that uh, it's working pretty well because the boots aren't much different than the last ones. But you can see here, there's clearly a difference from my last boots because like I said before, I've actually lost about an inch of length on the boot. So that means I need to bring this toe piece over this way so that it sits square on that boot. So that means I just need to unscrew this by hand. That brings this free and I can move it over, see if that's gonna work. Yeah, so just one more over. Should be plenty, but it doesn't take any Time to uh, to do another one if I have to. So let's see here. Let's tuck that in. It'll take four turns. I think that'll work really well for the snowboarding I do. You can see that's all it is. So it's just this little wing tip goes in there. Very, very simple. There you go. That's it. We're ready to go for the season.